All right, hate honors chemistry. This is a continuation of the unit five uh, video answer key notes. So last we talked about was wrapping up question four with converting grams and atoms. Now we're gonna start talking about empirical formulas. So let's look at question five. It says calculate the empirical formula of a compound that contains 4.20 grams of nitrogen and 12 grams of oxygen. Now I want you to remember that there is a procedure and I'm gonna write it here on the side and do most of the work on the side. The first step is converting percentages to grams. We already have grams, so we don't have to do that. The second step is converting grams to moles, dividing, div divide by molar mass. Third step is divide by smallest moles, and fourth is write the formula. This is kind of like another abridged version to the steps. Now we're already at step two. For this problem, we are at step two. I have 4.209 zero grams of nitrogen and 12 grams of oxygen. So I'm gonna start by, I have 4.20 grams of nitrogen. One mole of nitrogen is about 14 grams of nitrogen. And then I'm gonna have 12 grams of oxygen and one mole of oxygen is 16 grams of oxygen. I'm rounding here. It doesn't matter which number you use for the molar masses as long as you show your work if you round. And so I get 0 0.300 moles of nitrogen and I get 0 0.750 moles of oxygen. And so we just completed step two. And now we have to do step three, which is dividing by the smallest moles. Now between these two, my smallest is 0.3. So I'm gonna divide both of them by 0.3, divide by 0.3, and I get one N, oops, yeah, one N, and I get 2.50. Okay, and so I have 1n and 2.50. Now, I'm going to write both the answers here. For honors chem, we're not going to worry about the 0.5 rule, but if you did get 0.5, you'd have to multiply both of these by 2 to get whole numbers. So for AP chem, I'd multiply both of these by 2, and a 2.5 to 1 ratio is basically 5 to 2. 2.5 over 1 is the same as saying 5 over 2. So that would be N2O5. That would be the AP Chem answer. And that's what we would be doing if we're taking AP Chemistry or doing this um, intently. But if you want, for simplification, for showing work, you could round 2.5 to about 3. And I will accept an answer of NO3 if you show your work. Both of these are gonna be acceptable answers for my unit test. For other tests or for future reference, the more acceptable answer would be N205 because of this 0.5 rule. And that's because 2.5 over one is the same as five over two. So it's five O for every two N. If you remember, we express numbers as uh, improper fractions and I could use those numbers as the, co the subscripts. But on a unit test, you could just round 0.5. For us, for me, for Mr. Tadaldi, you could round 2.5 to 3 just to make your life a little bit simpler. Okay? So, on the unit test, I will accept NO3. Okay? Acceptable for me. Except by Mr. T. Okay? Um... All right, let's qu try question number six. When 20.16 grams of magnesium oxide reacts with carbon, carbon monoxide forms and 12.16 grams of me uh, magnesium metal remains. What is the empirical formula of magnesium oxide? Oh my, there is a lot here, okay? So I have a magnesium oxide. I have 20.16 grams of this MgO compound. I don't know, I'm gonna put question marks and it reacts with carbon and I get 
carbon monoxide and magnesium. And I have 12.16 grams of magnesium that comes out. Okay? Now, that means this compound must have had 12.16 grams of magnesium. Conservation of matter says if I react this compound with another compound and I get carbon monoxide and all of my magnesium now has been thrown out or reacted, this 12.16 grams must have been in the 20.16 grams. So if, and this is just like the zinc chloride calculations. If I do MgO minus the mass of Mg, I'll get the mass of O that's in this compound. So 20.16 grams of MgO minus 12.16 grams of Mg, I get, and you should get about 8 grams, right? I get 8 grams of O. And so now I have two elements. I have my mass of magnesium and my mass of oxygen. And it says, what is the empirical formula of the magnesium oxide? Now I'm back up here to the steps. I'm at step two. I don't have to worry about percentages. I have my mass of magnesium and I have my mass of oxygen that must have been, <coughs> excuse me, that mass of oxygen that must have been in the magnesium oxide because of conservation of matter. Okay. And so I'll repeat this again. I have 20.16 grams of MgO, and it reacted with carbon, and I got carbon monoxide, which is CO, and then all of my magnesium is now off of the oxygen. And just so you know, this oxygen is this oxygen, okay? And so the magnesium that was left over was 12.16 grams. Well, any magnesium that is present must have been the magnesium that's in the magnesium oxide, conservation of matter. And so now that I have my mass of magnesium, if I subtract it from the mass of magnesium oxide, I'll get the mass of oxygen. And so now I could follow the steps. I'm going to convert grams to moles now. So if I convert, I'm going to do it down here. If I have 12.16 grams of magnesium and I want to convert it to moles, I'm dividing by 24.3 grams. That's actually about 0 0.500 moles. And then if I have 8 grams of oxygen and I convert that to moles, it's about 16. The molar mass is about 16. I also get 0 0.500 moles. So I have 0 0.500 moles of magnesium, 0 0.500 moles of oxygen. If I divide by the smallest number, which is both of them, doesn't matter which one, I'm dividing by 0.5 right, which is the next step, divide by the smallest moles, I get 1 mg and 1 o. So if I want to write a formula, since they have the same number of moles, the formula is going to be mg o. Okay, so let me walk you through that again. I have the mass of magnesium oxide. I have how much magnesium must have been in the magnesium oxide, so I'm able to get the mass of magnesium and the mass of oxygen. And then I convert both of those to moles, and I found out that they have the same number of moles. That means if I divide by the smallest moles, which is 0.5, both of them gave me 0.5 moles, I'm going to get a 1 magnesium, 1 oxygen. If I want to write a formula with 1 magnesium and 1 oxygen, it's going to be MgO. This is just like a question that we did in class on the more mole practice, so make sure that you look at any other videos or you ask questions if you did not catch question number six. All right, I'm gonna move on to question number seven and probably end this part of the video. For question seven, it says, what is the molecular formula of each compound? So if you remember from our notes, if I have an empirical formula and I have the molar mass of the compound, if I take molar mass of the molecular and I divide it by the molar mass of the empirical, I'm going to get some number n, and this number n is what I multiply times my empirical formula to get my molecular formula. So that's what we're going to do here. And remember, an empirical formula is the simplest ratio of atoms, so CH is 1 to 1, NO2 is 1 to 2. Um, the molar mass, you should always get the molar mass of your empirical formula, of CH is 13 grams per mole. 
The molar mass of NO2, if you look on the periodic table and add up one nitrogen and two oxygens, you get 46 grams per mole. And then if you want to figure out the molecular formula, first of all, let's figure out how much larger my molar mass is than my empirical formula. So I'm going to do 78 divided by 13. That's about 6. This means that my empirical formula must be multiplied by 6 to get the actual molar mass. So 6 times CH is C6H6. And then same thing with NO2. If I put 92 over 46, I get 2. That means that my molar mass of the molecular formula is twice as large as the empirical formula. So I need to multiply this empirical formula by 2. And I get N2O4. And that is how you answer question number 7. Alrighty, I'm going to end this video at question 7. Um, be on the lookout for the last video, which will be answers to questions 8, 9, and 10.